Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Just to so the slight delay. Happy to be with you this morning. I'm Pat Courtney Strong, and I'm the team lead for the Mid Hudson Streetlight Consortium, which is funded by NYSERDA's Clear Greener Communities Program. We started about two years ago this month. I'm today with representatives of the New Power Authority, the towns of Rosendale and Red Hook, and the city of Kingston to provide an overview of these communities' experiences as they transition to LED streetlights. Our goal is to help other municipal leaders learn how to move forward with this technology, which provides substantial energy and financial savings. Before we begin, we have a few housekeeping items to go over with you. Working attendees on mute, but you can communicate with us through the chat feature of WebEx. If signed in through your computer, there's a toolbar that becomes visible at the top center of your screen uh, where you per when you put your cursor there. On the toolbar, you'll see that the chat icon is to the right. You communicate with us privately or publicly through that chat box by using the drop-down menu for either. This is also should submit questions for the speakers to us, which we'll take at the end. If you're connected via your telephone only, you can text me your questions for presenters at 914-388-7412. That number is 914-388-7412. We'll do our best to get in as many questions as possible. As I'm sure you know, things can happen in a webinar. If you get disconnected for any reason, just log back in. Notice audio or visual issues on our end. Please feel free to use the chat box or email me to let us know what you're experiencing. And to answer the most popular question we usually receive, yes, we'll definitely send you the slides in a follow-up email after the webinar. Please your feedback as well. We'd be very glad to hear from you. Our contact information will be provided at the end of the webinar and in the slides that are sent to you. All right. I'd like to do a sound check with uh, Jen Metzger now. I'm just going to take her. Jen, are you there? I am. All right. So we're good to go. Our agenda today. Uh, you just heard from me. We're going to go over to Kevin uh, from NYPA in a moment. We'll then hear from the towns and the city of Kingston, and we'll have definitely some time for Q&A. Hudson Streetlight Consortium was funded by NYSERDA's Cleaner Greener Communities Program. We had a number of uh, deliverables that we've been working on since June of 2016, and we surveyed uh, amongst the 100 plus municipalities in the Mid Hudson region, and connected with about four dozen of you in an ongoing way. Uh, and put, we and then invited our members, our newly interested uh, parties, to become members of our consortium. Uh, then we undertook, uh, particularly the leadership of Jen Metzger, who's on the call. She's a uh, councilwoman in Red Hook. We undertook an assessment uh, study of streetlight issue uh, as it would uh, affect the economics of it for communities as well as the sustainability benefits. And that report is uh, completed now. It went through an extensive um, uh, view process with NYSERDA and the New York um, Service Commission. It's on our website, nystreetlights.org. Jen will be talking much more about it, but I commend it to your attention. It's a really wonderful report, and she and her team did a terrific job. Another goal we set for the consortium was to help communities uh, head with LED streetlights by means of a procurement aggregation. We saw ourselves uh, needing to do two different kinds of procurement aggregations, one for larger communities, uh, would want a uh, kind of a to nuts approach and another community managed for the many communities in the Mid Hudson that are quite small and have a small number of street lights. So that was initial charge and um, we moved forward with that in the summer of 2016. 
And just to recap, because I've talked to some of you uh, who are on the call as attendees, and I know that you're in all different places with our investigation of this technology and what it could mean to your community. Uh, we have been uh, thrilled to have our finds confirmed and reconfirmed. The energy savings uh, afforded by LED street lights are considerable. It's upwards of 65 to even 70 percent for some communities. The obvious um, greenhouse gas reductions that would accrue from that are substantial. Uh, that gone into in some uh, at length in, in uh, the options report that just referenced uh, the team that was led by Jen Metzger. A wonderful side benefit is the dramatically lower maintenance costs that come with conversion to LED street lights. Uh, supervisors and mayors have had a lot of questions about this over the years as we've gone on with our uh, Asian and outreach on this. Uh, but the bottom line is, is we're seeing a whole new uh, era dawn in terms of the amount of money you'll pay uh, toward maintenance of streetlights. Uh, you see customer, you've been paying through your uh, tariff, and now there's new options uh, to, to uh, handle it directly, but the costs are dramatically lower. Of course, improved light uniformity, enhanced pedestrian and vehicle safety, Safety. Those benefits are, are uh, going to be widely known. It does reduce light pollution, and of course, it's an opportunity to demonstrate environmental leadership, which so many communities in the Mid Hudson prize as a uh, as a uh, opportunity. Finally, as we've been undertaking this project, uh, G has moved on even further, and we're in many communities interested in. Uh, LEDs as a precursor to smart cities and Internet of Things technologies that they will adopt uh, in the near future. So those are uh, the main benefits of the technology. A number of educational um, activities are, uh, that got us to this point. Uh, helped a number of communities uh, have a fit inventory of their street lights. Uh, for those interested in purchasing the street lights themselves, we felt it was an essential recommendation so that you would know what you were buying. Uh, provided street light design guidance uh, through our uh, partner, George Woodbury. Uh, we provided a lot of guidance uh, and decision making support as to whether municipalities would want to manage such a project themselves or have a turnkey. Uh, Provider. Of course, an essential early question is rent versus own. Uh, the state of New York allows both options, and we went through a, an extended number of calls and webinars and workshops to help communities consider these two main options. Uh, and finally, George Woodbury, our partner, provided design work. Books uh, for those who were participating in an initial RFP request for proposals that we did put out at the end of 2017. Before we get to the Power Authority, uh, uh, Kevin Trent is up next. I just want to explain a little background. So I we have some people joining us today who have not checked in in a while because they're busy people, and so I do want to say. Um, a bit about the RFP process that so many of us went through together. Uh, <clears throat> we had excellent um, support. 18 communities came together, uh, collaborated on um, uh, adding their names to a document that went out for public bid, and we were pleased to hear from uh, two excellent regional uh, companies for um, uh, installation and, and uh, subsequent maintenance of streetlights. We looked at their proposals extensively. Uh, there was a third proposal, however, which was the New York Power Authority. And so on uh, reviewing their offering, it was determined that, uh, not surprisingly, the state of New York had the purchasing power um, that was not possible for a, a private company to replicate in terms of procurement of LED streetlights. 
So what we did with the RFP uh, early uh, uh, first quarter 2018, we actually set it aside. We determined it was for the greater good of our 18 uh, municipalities that we set it aside and we introduce our municipalities to the New York Power Authority, uh, which just committed to um, an accelerated program of uh, street light installation and uh, maintenance support. So that we come to be here today with the New York Power Authority. And I'll turn it over now uh, to Kevin Luteran. Um, thank you, and good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm excited to go over some of the services that the uh, offers um, was has been able to help participants of the Mid Hudson Street Lighting Consortium. Um, and also going to provide a quick update uh, where we're at now. Um, give a little background. As Pat mentioned, I'm Kevin Luteran, Smart Street Lighting New York Program Manager. Um, and for those of you not familiar with this program, it's an initiative that's part of the New York Reforming the Energy Vision. The program has an overall goal of, of converting 500,000 streetlights to LEDs by 2025. Um, so far, the Milton aggregation has been a great opportunity to partner with local communities to pull their and drive down the LED conversion costs through economy of scale. And this is helping uh, achieve that statewide goal. Uh, next slide. Can you? Oh, yeah. There's a delay. I think there's. Oh. Okay. Um. So, what services NYPA offers? Well, to begin with, NYPA is a turnkey solution that provides street lighting expertise from beginning to end. It has the owner's rep to make sure pricing is competitive, and offer vetted contractors. We've already gone out and secured material pricing, like Pat mentioned, for LED conversions through a statewide contract that was extremely successful at driving down material costs for the LED conversions. On that, we have an engineer of record for all our projects and provide construction management to the different municipalities. And really, we offer this as a one point of contact to, to simplify this complicated process work with uh, the municipalities to create a solution that fits their needs and can incorporate smart city technology, which I'll touch on a little later in this presentation. Also, throughout the construction process, we commit the entire system to adjust for any changes necessary. So these streetlight systems are massive and there's some unknowns and there's always going to be some tweaking that needs to happen. Um, for instance, if a resident reaches out to you and says that there's light shining on their yard that wasn't there before, before the conversion, we'll be happy to go out, install some shielding to really perfect the system to make sure the customer's happy. So the way municipalities can work with NIFA is through Public Authority Law 1005-17. It really enables NIFA to work for municipalities, um, to authority, and we act on behalf of the communities to go out to bid to secure services. Um, it really helps to streamline the development process and reduce the number of steps that municipalities need to go through to complete this energy conversion. So as I mentioned before, NIFA is willing to with the communities to create a, a solution that fits their needs. Um, on top of the LED conversion, we can incorporate smart city technologies. Um, they're really broken down into two separate groups. Uh, as you can see, the table, the left side of the table uh, falls under the asset management controls. This really gives you the ability to control, monitor, and self-diagnose your system with uh, smart nodes installed on the street lights. Um, it will provide GIS mapping, so you'll know exactly where the street light is. Um, if it helps, it can automatically generate work orders and send that to your maintenance contractor and your city representative, so you know. And the um, repair will happen before any resident is even able to respond and let you know that there is an outage. Uh, it also includes utility grade metering, so you can help monitor um, energy consumption and gives you that full controllability. So if you want, you can dim your street lights down during um, 
period of time where there's not a lot of people, like one to four in the morning, or if you choose to, you can raise light levels. So it really gives you a lot of control over the system. And then at one next step there is the advanced smart city controls. It's a new internet of things, and it's kind of an emerging market. So some of the options that are available are Wi-Fi hubs, so you can have Wi-Fi throughout your entire city. Um, you can also install cameras for safety issues, or you can use them for video analytics to monitor traffic on um, parking. You can also install weather sensors to monitor the outdoor air quality of certain areas. Um, also, keep track of noise and acoustics to see um, where pedestrians are or high traffic areas will be. Next slide. Um, if you use Knife and Finance the entire LED project, including the purchase of the streetlights from the utility, one of the benefits NIPA has uh, for municipalities is they do not need to make any milestone payments to the contractors through the development, design, or construction of the project. All payments will be made by NIPA, and so really the municipality will only to make a payment once the project is finally complete. We used to offer a tax exempt municipal lease, but due to federal standards and regulations that are going to be changing in the start of 2019, uh, this model would have to be reported as debt. So to kind of pivot and create the best option for our customers, NIPA's financing model is now a variable rate commercial paper. Just seeing interest rates between two and a half percent and four percent. Um, we also structure the term of the loan to be the same period as the simple payback of your conversion. Next slide. So taking a look at Mid Hudson Street like Consortium, um, this is a quick snapshot of the communities that we've reached out to. There's a total of 21 um, interested in participating. And the table was created uh, early last week, so I know there's been a couple of additions that aren't included. But sorry, the city of Kingston and town of Red Hook have signed the design authorizations and are participating in the first round of the conversion. Two communities make up about 28% of the total streetlights in the aggregation, and I strongly encourage all the municipalities to get on board in this first round. We haven't gone out to bid yet for the project, so exact pricing is not determined, but we're anticipating the first round to be the best pricing since it's most likely going to include the most number of streetlights, and that's the whole economy of scale. If we're able to pull together uh, a lot of communities, even if you have a small amount of streetlights, um, it's really going to drive down those labor costs. Um, we established a final cutoff date of July 31st for the first round, so to give you a spot and bid package, we would need a design authorization signed before the 31st. If you have any questions uh, regarding this, please feel free to reach out to myself or the type of rep you've been working with. Next slide. So just a little further, this is a list of communities that are currently participating in the aggregation or have shown interest. Again, there are some last minute additions not reflected here. But everyone on this list has received a project proposal that outlines the total cost and savings associated with the LED conversion. I know some of you have re received an updated purchase price from your utility, and if you'd like that updated in your proposal so that you actually see the, the final and more accurate cost to buy your system, please reach us. We'd be happy to update it um, to really give you the, a final product. And again, more communities that are able to sign up this first round in any round really um, really improves the the whole aggregation and drives down the cost of these conversions. Next slide. So the estimated timeline um, that will show the milestones we need to move forward with. So by July 31st, we will need the municipalities that plan on moving forward with the conversion that have signed design authorizations. One of those will have a general sense of the total number of streetlights involved in this project, and we can schedule joint kickoff meetings um, in the month of August. So in these kickoff meetings, we're going to work with the municipalities to identify any problem areas or specific requirements they're looking for, such as underlit or overlit areas in their city, and we'll work with you to design the street light system to fix these issues. 
Um, so once we identify uh, some of your pain points, uh, we'll go back and create the basis of design. Um, that we established in September 2018. And once that's done, we'll go out to labor bidding between September and October to re uh, figure out what all the costs are for this project. Once we bid back, we'll have pretty much accurate uh, estimate of what the pricing would be. And we're anticipating the pricing to be on a unit basis. So we'll know per street light how much it's going to cost to convert in uh, different scenarios. So there shouldn't be any surprises when we're out in the field making these conversions. Um, and if there are some discrepancies, we'll know the pricing ahead of time of what it should cost to fix these issues. So once the overbidding is complete and we have hard numbers for our project, we'll need to have signed contracts. So this first contract is called the Initial Customer Installation Commitment. We call it the ICIC. And this pretty much allows NAPA to move forward with the construction of the LED conversion. So when we receive the contract, um, we'll put an order in for the materials. Typically, it's an eight to 10 week lead time, but when we receive about 50% of the materials, we'll go out and begin construction, which we're expected to start in January, 2019, first round. Um, slide. Just to touch on the next step, Again, if you received an update purchase price from your local utility, uh, feel free to send us that updated number and we'd be happy to put together a new proposal. Uh, again, if you want to be part of the first round of this, this uh, aggregation, we would need design authorization uh, to move forward to make sure you're guaranteed a spot. Um, as I mentioned before, we'll need a master energy service agreement uh, with NIPA to allow us to go out to bid for items. And this is part of the statutory authority uh, piece of this presentation that really just has the terms and condition of the contract. Um, and from there, schedule a joint kickoff meeting with multiple communities to figure out the design requirements needed to uh, meet, meet needs. Um, and with that, that's the general sense of what NIPA does and where we're at with the Mid-Hudson Lighting Consortium. And I'll pass it back to Pat. Thank you, Kevin. That was great. Uh, I just want to remind our listeners that we do have two ways for you to submit questions. So you should have a, a bar, you know, at the top of your screen or perhaps on the side, which has different options to you. And one of them is chat. So you send a question to us that way. Uh, if you're joining by phone, you can always just text a question to 914-388-7422. Thanks a lot. We'll take questions at the end. Okay, Metzger, you are on. Hey, uh, um, Well, as, as Pat said, I, I wear a couple of different hats. I, I direct Citizens for Local Power, which is a partner organization in the Mid-Hudson Streetlight Consortium. Uh, and I'm also on the Rosendale Town Board. Uh, but when I first started uh, working on street lighting, it was back when I chaired Rosendale's Environmental Commission. And we were, uh, we first began to look into street light improvements a few years ago. Just to give you some of the context, it was a very different situation back then. The utilities didn't yet for LED. Uh, there wasn't a clear pathway to taking ownership of the street lights and doing the conversion yourself, uh, but we saw the potential and we wanted to better understand the savings. And we also wanted to see whether there were lights we didn't need um, because, you know, that's a great way to save energy and money if, you know, you can take lights out of service that are not necessary. Um, and finally, we wanted to evaluate the condition of the lights. Are they, you know, are they working? So just to give you a sense, and, and you can, uh, um, you know, just this is volunteer assessment done by, you know, our conservation advisory board and a very doable kind of project. To a sense of what was involved, uh, we first requested a copy of our streetlight inventory from Central Hudson, that's our utility, uh, along with a map of where they were. And uh, then we did some research and developed a field survey sheet to evaluate the condition of each light and whether it was necessary. And uh, we divided up our 192 lights among our commissioners to make manageable. 
and it wasn't really hard at all. We each were responsible for about a dozen lights, which we um, we visited uh, in both the daytime and the nighttime with our survey sheets. And through this process, we developed a list of lights that we believed we could decommission. Uh, and then we went back and talked with neighbors that lived near those lights to get their input. Um, and after we collected the data, I, I did an analysis of the potential economic and energy savings, both from take or, uh, 10 percent of our lights out of service, that, that, that was the number of lights we believed were not necessary, as uh, well as from um, taking over ownership of our lights and converting to LEDs. Uh, and and uh, we found uh, through that assessment that we could reduce our bills by close to 8% after the our street lighting bills, to, uh, the town street lighting bills after the conversion was paid off. This finding would be confirmed two years later um, by the much more in-depth assessment undertaken uh, for the Mid-Hudson Streetlight Consortium. So um, there's just huge savings involved. Uh, now, uh, as I said, back in 2013, there wasn't a clear path uh, forward to converting to LEDs. Uh, this changed in 2015 uh, when legislation was passed in New York State requiring that the utilities provide streamlined pathway for municipalities uh, to purchase their streetlight systems. And uh, in 2016, uh, the Mid-Hudson Streetlight Consortium uh, was launched to help municipalities undertake this commission. And so Dale took full advantage of, of these opportunities to move forward. Uh, but the next step we did was to undertake a building audit of our street lights. This is different from the field assessment that I just discussed. A billing audit examines the UT's street billing history and records, uh, compares them to what actually is in the field. And we with a firm to undertake this audit, and they found a number of billing inaccuracies by utilities over the year, by the utility central heads over the years that, that clearly totaled about thirty thousand dollars in overcharges by the utility. Um, now, by law, they can only go back as far as six years, uh, but that was a, a, a significant um, chunk of change uh, for which uh, you know, we were re we were refunded by the utility. Um, so, you, you, so taking this billing audit is valuable for one because you you if there are overcharges, you you can be um, uh, back for those. Uh, it's also important to make sure that the utilities' records of your lights are accurate before you purchase your street light system. Uh, you don't want to buy lights that that you may not actually have, and their records are not necessarily that accurate. Um, we undertook the billing audit. We moved forward with decommissioning about 10% of the lights based on. Uh, 2013 assessment by our environmental commission that I discussed. Uh, we made sure before we moved forward with this, we made sure to get the input and approval of our police, fire, and highway departments, which all which surveyed all of the lights, make sure to make sure it was safe that we took them out of service. Uh, I also recommend sending letters, sorry, letters to the neighbors of any lights that you might consider taking out of service, just to give them a final opportunity to weigh in. Um, and finally, you should check with your utility because they all have different policies about taking lights out of service. Sentinel doesn't charge to remove lights, but some utilities require that you pay the mean underappreciated value of the lights if, if you take them out of service. Um, in addition to decommissioning lights, our town board formally decided to purchase our light system from Central Hudson and join the Mid-Hudson Streetlight Consortium's aggregated procurement of LEDs uh, to take advantage of that collective buying power. And we will, we do plan to be in that first wave uh, of uh, the aggregation. Last year, we were awarded $50,000 from NYSERDA for achieving clean energy community status. 
uh, and if anyone has questions about that at the end, you know, be happy to take them. But we, our town did, took four high impact energy actions, uh, as sort of a competition among municipalities. And, and uh, we were awarded that 50,000 and, we, and we've decided to devote those funds to our streetlight conversion project. Uh, so between this grant and the reimbursement for uh, utility streetlight overcharges, payback on the investment to convert our lights will be one and a half years, which is pretty fantastic. Uh, the, um, and typical payback for Central Hudson Territory is, is, is four to five years, which is still very good. And if there are questions about other service territories, we could take it to the end. Um, earlier this year, we began negotiations with the utility to purchase the streetlight system, and we should be finishing that up this month. Uh, once we sign the purchase agreement with the utility, uh, Central Hudson will then submit it to the Public Service Commission for approval. It's important uh, for you all to be aware that uh, while they, they typically, the Public Commission typically approves these, I've never seen a case in which they haven't. But it does take a while. Uh, it can take three to six months to just get through that part of the process. So you want to really get started soon. If, if you are, if you haven't, if you have started the process and want to take ownership and convert to LEDs. Um, in the meantime, we'll be working with NIPA to undertake the conversion as soon as the purchase is approved. Um, next, let's see. Next slide. Please kept going. One slide. <laughs> Next. So, thanks. So, I close by reviewing some of the chief findings of the Mid Hudson Streetlight Consortium from assessment that we undertook that Pat mentioned on the energy and cost savings from conversion. In case you had any doubt that this is a worthwhile investment. So, the annual, you know, for the for our consortium only looked at the utilities. I mean, it's most of the most of the utilities in New York, but uh, ONR, Central Hudson, and NYSEG, we did not we include National Grid since they don't operate in the Mid Hudson region. But you can this compares? You can see the savings uh, uh, comparing uh, the utilities now have their own LED options, so you can convert you can convert to their LEDs, uh, but as you can see from this, the, the savings from taking ownership once you've paid that initial investment are substantially greater uh, than sticking with uh, the utilities uh, streetlights with their LEDs. And the reason is uh, because your the rent charged uh, for the rates that you pay the utility uh, for the are very high. That's the biggest chunk of your ball. So when you take ownership of it, you are no longer paying that quote unquote rent. Um, and uh, their energy savings are are very important, as Pat mentioned, uh, uh, as well. But it's it's really the um, you know the rates not paying those street lighting rates as well that that um, save. Uh, and then next slide. the kind of energy savings um, you can get. I mean, under both approaches, whether you convert to the utilities LEDs or whether you purchase your own LEDs and convert, uh, the energy savings are dramatic. Uh, and it, it's, you know, it's, there are some, there's a real mix of streetlight types out there. Uh, many municipalities still have Merc vapor light which are very antiquated and very inefficient. So, so the savings are really significant. Um, and there, are. Um, questions at the end. Thank you. Now, we have a bit of a little tech challenge here. Our next speaker is uh, Robert McKeon, the supervisor. Uh, Red Hook, and he's calling in today by phone. So I have to find him among the other callers. So I hope you'll just bear with me here. I think I can do that. Uh, 
I'm looking for the town of Red Hook phone, and I'm just not spotting it. They don't show me phone numbers. So I'm going to um, do the thing, and I'm going to unmute everybody, uh, which is a dangerous thing to do in a way. But so okay, if, you could, if everyone else put your phones on mute, I now have Robert. Um, this is a really tough way to do this because we have 45 people. Robert, we'll give it our best shot, and if it becomes too unwitty, I'll have to mute everybody again. Oh, um, very good. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I have, no, that's, that's Blundell, the village. I'm just not seeing, you know, your name as a town phone. I'm not seeing the word Red Hook among the colors. Okay. Um, so it, it should do you get telephone numbers, Pat? Uh no, I just have names. And then some who are on uh cell phones would be shown as uh you know, just caller number one, two or up to thirty nine. But at any rate, we're gonna try this. You are unmuted. And uh, so welcome. Okay. Good morning everyone. Welcome, Robert, Mitchell, supervisor. This there we go. <laughs> We're going to have to. i am try to in, uh, mute individual people as you're speaking. I hope that's okay. Okay. Just, you know, fine. when, uh, yeah. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, as uh, Pat mentioned, I'm Robert McKean, the town supervisor here at Red Hook in the northwestern corner of Dutchess County. Uh, township has uh, inside of it. Two wonderful villages, uh, both the village of Red Hook and the village of Tivoli, as well as um, a small liberal arts college called Bard College. Um, we were happy to be the uh, lead municipality in the amalgamation of 18 municipalities, or I like to call it the Mid Hudson Streetlight Petri dish. Um, we have approximately 11,500 people in our community. And you can see in the first slide we have a couple of uh, designations, uh, climate smart community. And I think Jen mentioned uh, clean energy community. Uh, we nudged uh, Rosendale out there, and we were able to receive $100,000 in uh, award from uh, the state. We have in our township less than 300 lights, but when we include our villages, and we're sort of um, helping pave the way for our villages as well, um, we have um, uh, then double that amount. Next slide. Just to give you context, uh, Red Hook has been engaged in clean energy efforts now for quite some time. I think it was uh, a decade ago um, that I instituted an energy committee here, and they've been very instrumental in uh, achieving some, some environmental uh, wins. Of, uh, photovoltaic uh, installation here at Town Hall that is taking care of two thirds of our needs. Uh, we have one at the farmhouse that's 100%. Uh, we inched uh, in 2010 in what's called 10% challenge, an educational campaign by our Conservation Advisory Council to uh, educate folks on how they could uh, lower their footprint by 10%. We adopted a climate action plan a couple of years later, and then in 2016, um, we uh, were the lead municipality in a group of several in Northern Duchess to a solarized campaign. And for those of you who have uh, been familiar with that, it's a sort of vetted process to narrow down and assist homeowners in having uh, TV installed. Uh, homes, and uh, we had great success. We tripled our deployment of uh, solar within uh, the township. Um, last year, um, uh, thanks to a grant from uh, the state, we uh, uh, construct four new charging stations here at Town Hall, and we're looking into more uh, with the next round. Some projects we're working on is uh, in conjunction with our village, a uh, community slash municipal solar farm project, which we think is an interesting uh, um, uh, structure where we will have uh, 
uh, it probably owned, and um, they'll take advantage of the invest tax credits, and then we will have an option to acquire it after those credits are exhausted. Um, we're retrofitting our town hall as we speak. We just uh, uh, completed um, closed cell foam insulation here, and we are uh, modernizing our HVAC equipment. We have uh, a community-wide Energize Red Hook program, a weatherization program uh, through the state Energize New York. I encourage you to look into that as well. And in particular, we're targeting those folks who, through their income eligibility, um, will have a lot of the work paid for. We are doing a fairly significant size uh, PV installation on our highway garage, and we are um, beginning a complete street designed for our community to help lower our footprint. Uh, the uh, uh consisted of um, municipalities within uh, Dutchess, but also West Westchester, Columbia, Orange, Rockland, and Ulster counties. Um, it made uh, for a very nice group. Um, a couple of challenges because uh, some of these communities were not in the same utility area. And uh, we'll just uh, leave you uh, with uh, where we are in the process. Um, the town of Red Hook has um, uh, finish our uh, negotiations with the utility. We've signed our contract. It's in front of the PEFC for approval. We've signed up with NIPA, and they are uh, beginning our uh, design uh, process. I would uh, like to offer to all the municipalities that are out there um, any of the documents that we've worked on, including those with the utility, both the purchase and sale and the operation and maintenance agreements, um, we'd be happy to share with you as a way to assist you in getting up to speed with the rest of the municipalities. I would urge you strongly to begin uh, negotiating with uh, your utility because the price of the bulbs uh, upon acquisition are not going down, they're going up. So the sooner you um, are able to complete that process, the lower your cost will be. And uh, we've had our initial kickoff meeting with uh, the New York Power Authority, and uh, I will just say that uh, we had similar uh, response uh, with them as we did with the consortium. It's been Enormously helpful to uh, work with folks who have the expertise that we don't normally bring to uh, a very specific topic like converting streetlights. And again, any questions you have or any documents you would like, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my email address is r mckeon m c k e o n at redhook.org. You can find that information on our website as well. And back to Pat. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. I'm going to um, interject an editorial opinion here. One reason we were so happy to have Robert on the call today is that, you know, it's been a pleasure working with all the communities over the last two years of this consortium. Uh, we've learned as much from them as they have uh, from us, hopefully. Uh, but Red Hook Re stood out in terms of uh, offering to take the lead and, frankly, uh, in, in putting up with the headaches that that entailed. I think it was a learning process for all of us, but the town of Red Hook really uh, took this on. Uh, they brought in their um, town attorney uh, to help craft the RFP so that it would have the, the absolute um, bulletproof qualities that you want in such a document uh, for municipality. And really, there was no blueprint for this. There was no uh, multiple uh, municipality aggregation like this that we certainly knew about that we could model this on uh, in New York State. Of course, we were working with George Woodbury, who had done this out of state, but there were certain issues specific to New York State that we had to work through. So I thank the town of Red Hook very much. I thank uh, Mr. McKeon and his terrific staff. I'm going to mute everybody again so we can on to our uh, next speaker, which is the uh, City of Kingston.
All right. Welcome, Mayor Noble. Great. Thanks, Pat. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Steve Noble, and I am the mayor of the city of Kingston. I've been the mayor since 2016, and we have the opportunity in Kingston to have a lot of fruit. Um, and you know, like Rosendale and Red Hook, uh, we have been working on green uh, issues for quite some time. Um, something that um, we've been, um, you know, uh, with because we want to be able to replace um, all of these uh, street lights, um, and we want to be able to um, also do it in a way that is, um, you know, beneficial to both our taxpayers uh, and the environment. So through that process, um, back in 2017, um, we had the ability uh, to uh, finally acquire uh, ownership of, of over 2,000 uh, non-LED street lights um, from Central Hudson. Um, I want to thank the consortium and, and, and Pat and the team that helped uh, us work with Central Hudson to be able to acquire the street lights. Um, it was not an easy process um, by any means, uh, but we were able to get it. And, you know, we now uh, own and maintain um, all of our uh, own street lights uh, here um, in the city of Kingston. I'm going to take a break for a minute and see how we can figure out how to remute everybody because we are getting back. That is, I think, on mute now. Okay, let's try that again. All right, Steve. Is this the next slide? Next slide. And so, you know, for us, we have, um, you know, been uh, moving toward being a more green and sustainable city uh, back in 2009. Signed on. The climate smart community, um, and then uh, in 2011, we were one of the first communities uh, to be awarded uh, climate smart certification, uh, and now are one of the uh, few communities in the, in the state that are silver certified. Uh, and that process has really allowed us to really drill down and see um, what are the best ways for us to reduce our energy costs, and and by doing so, also reduce greenhouse gas emissions and Streetlight always kept coming to the top of the list. Um, we um, have um, so many uh, energy inefficient goals, um, you know, throughout our city of uh, varying types and varying wattages. Um, we felt that now was the time. The amount of money that we were able to save um, on street lighting um, was, um, you know, uh, instant um, when we purchased them from Central Hudson. Um, but now we have the ability to um, further reduce our energy costs by actually converting those off of the LED. Here. So for us, one of the things that um, we wanted to be able to do uh, was we couldn't do this alone um, with over a thousand streetlights um, and um, with really not enough staff to be able to implement this project um, ourselves and, and also meet the requirements that Central Hudson has um, when we're working in high voltage areas. Um, we needed a, a turnkey approach, and um, for us, that meant um, being able to now work with NYSA, um who are uh, coming in to both help us engineer um, on this project, um, and also be able to um, help build and supervise um, the LED um, street lighting network um, build out. And one of the things that you know we are excited about is that we're going to be partnering with firms that have had experience doing this, that um, will make it really easy for me um, so that um, we are no missteps, um, so that we know exactly what's coming down the pipe. Uh, we know that um, if a resident has a concern, that we'll have uh, folks that um, will be able to help respond. Um, a few weeks ago, we had our initial kickoff meeting um, with NIFA uh, and uh, their engineers, and we feel really confident um, in this process and, and um, are so confident already in, in, in the savings that have been projected. Um, and so one of the things that you know we're also excited to do is if there are other communities that have questions about the process, um, you know, our city stands here to help um, because we would love to have many communities join with us um, in this first round so that we all can get a better price. Um, and so um, that was through my quick uh, quick notes, Pat. I know that we're getting close to the end. We want to be able to have some time for Q&A, and so I will be here um, uh, if anyone has any specific questions about our process. Um, but, you know, the city's excited, and, you know, we hope to be able to have our first street lights installed. Uh, in December or early, uh, or early January of next year through the NIFA program. 
thank you so much, Steve. That's terrific. So, as I mentioned in the very beginning, there's always a little bit of excitement with webinars in terms of the technology. So we seem to find ourselves in a situation where I can't really mute the audience. And truly um, uh, really or not, we haven't had any questions come in through the chat box. So uh, this is an experiment. Uh, we, we usually like to keep it uh, well organized through text messages and chat. But if there is someone who'd like to ask a question, uh, you certainly can do that at this point. I have one, though, I'm going to throw out first for um, Kevin Turin. I don't think we uh, tackled the issue of maintenance uh, today yet. And so, so many supervisors over the last two years have asked me uh, to, you know, explain how maintenance will work. Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Oh, just checking. Um, so the way that maintenance is working right now, um, when we go out for the labor bid, we'll also include a provision to get pricing for the operations and maintenance of the streetlight system um, for a three or five year contract term. But in addition, NYPA is currently working on developing their own O&M uh, service offering. Um, it's in the early stages, and we're expected for that to roll out um, sometime uh, early next year. So that turnkey offering, we'll have everything pre-established for pricing um, to meet different needs of what municipalities are looking for in terms of operations and maintenance. Great. Um, and what should communities do who are hearing this for the first time now or who are just beginning to engage? Um, you know, you could just repeat that again, uh, Kevin, because I know I, I spoke to a supervisor this morning. I was so thrilled to hear from him. And uh, he's interested now. He's working with his uh, town council and uh, conservation committee, uh, but just at the very beginning. Could you wrap? So if uh, communities are interested and they want to kind of take the first step towards this process, um, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, we can have a call. And really what we need to get started is a copy of their utility bills and a register of their streetlight inventory. Uh, that will give us uh, the information we need to put together a preliminary proposal uh, that outlines the total cost and benefits of a streetlight conversion. So I think my email is attached to the last slide of this. Um, and I'm sure I'll send it all out. So feel free to reach out to me and we can get the ball rolling. Terrific. Now, I did misspeak. We have two questions. Uh, the first one, let's see, who is this going to go to? Uh, we, uh, so the, the per we have a price from uh, Central Hudson Gas and Electric to buy the existing fixtures. That seems to be a set price by rule. Um, Robert McKeon mentioned the word negotiate. Is there room to move uh, them to a lower figure? Well, Robert McKeon, I, I bet you would like to answer this question. Uh, uh, it's uh, it, it's probably not the answer they want, but uh, the, the answer is yes, there's some room. Um, I don't know how much room there is. It all depends on uh, the municipality. They seem to be uh, hard and fast with their, their uh, pricing. Uh, as you know, the more municipalities that convert, the higher the cost will be uh, for uh, those that wait uh, longer to do so and negotiate with the uh, utility. I would also uh, mention to you, just because you have a price given to you by the utility doesn't mean the price is locked in. So you want to be cognizant of moving that along uh, because there is a period in which they uh, uh, Continue to update their inventory and uh, charge municipalities for their stranded costs. Can I chime in on this? Yes, please, Jen. So, so Stroll Hudson is all utilities have different methodology for figuring out uh, how much to charge you per fixture to buy your existing lights. Uh, Central Hudson is different from the rest in that they are charging they're charging what, uh, what they have on their as the um, 
remaining undepreciated value of the lake that still exists. Basically, um, you know, there's there's not room in Central Hudson Territory to negotiate the price because they're not charging any more than the remaining net book value of the lights. And the public service requires that utilities be made whole, um, meaning, you know, if if you don't pay, if we don't pay the net book value, the remaining net book value when we purchase this sim, it means that the other rate rate payers have to pay it. So you're going to end up having to pay the price. What Hudson has been doing is been ha, has been placing lights, the old lights as they, as they break with new LEDs, and what that's doing. Is increasing the value of their street light assets. So, um, so that's that's why the price is going up overall in Central Hudson Territory over time. Every April, they they have to um, they have to reassess the value of those assets uh, to report uh, tax purposes. So it just went up again because they've replaced more of their old lights with LEDs. Um, so it's good to move on it now, basically. But there's not, there's not a lot of room for negotiation in the price in Central Hudson Territory. There is an other. I have I have you know, heard that in other utility service territories there has been some negotiation. Um, which you can negotiate some of the <coughs> Of the uh, the agreements, the operating agreement with the utility that you will sign uh, that spells out responsibilities versus the utility's responsibilities once you take ownership of the land. So, and I believe, um, Supervisor uh, Rob, Rob, you were going to I'm going to share a track changes version of the Central Hudson Agreement. That you all negotiated so that others can see the changes you were able to get. The utilities have kind of a boilerplate uh, agreement that will get to a municipality. So it's helpful to see what other municipalities have done that have already negotiated their agreement. So, so Jen, can you cap to the best of your recollection the the price differential between Kingston, which asked first, and then Red Hook, which was six or nine months later, was what about? It had been by about seventy dollars per unit yeah. cost. So well, pay. back in twenty fifth, with the price that Kingston paid was I think two hundred and thirty four dollars a light, and uh, now it's up to that. That was in twenty fifteen, I believe, right? right? You yes, uh, well, we started the process then, and and then by the the PSC approved it, it, it was you know 2017. But yes, it was locked in 234, which is what it was back then, which was before Sensen was really installing mm -hmm. LEDs. Uh, now that price is 363 dollars, uh, so it's gone up 120 dollars per light since 15. Okay, we have another question. Uh, let's see. If a municipality purchases their lights, how does the utility charge for the power usage? Jen. Mm -hmm. um, so the they're going to charge you um, uh, a cert, just just the well. First of all, it's to know that street lights are not metered, so. Um, so you're not what, what make assumptions about burn hours for street lights a year a utility does I uh, think it's what was it forty thousand burn hours a year or something like that um so you're going to pay you know, for a set number of hours per year for your street light um and what you'll be um you when you convert to LEDs, you have to give the utility 
you have to share with them what um, uh, new inventory of lights. So the wattages of the LED wattages that you installed as replacements for the existing lights. And they will charge you accordingly. Each utility does have charges for supply in a different way. But, um, but those rates are all in the utilities tariffs. They're called tariffs. Uh, um, the utilities rates and policies, and they can all be found on the Public Service Commission website. Um, but you're paying a fraction of what you previously paid the utility because you're 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 no longer paying rent for the fixtures one uh, and two you're use when you convert LEDs you know you're going to be using between 65 and 75 percent less energy so you'll be paying a much smaller right. Okay, um, we have a bunch more questions that came in. Uh, let's see, from Annabelle Reynoso, what are the fusing requirements of utilities? And do utilities require contractors slash installers to be approved in order to work in their grid? Want to take it again, Jen? Sure. So every utility except for Central Hudson requires that an a fuse, an inline fuse, be an, it's a it's a fuse be installed. It's essentially um, it's a fuse that that uh, demarcates where your light that now own begins and their and their lighting equipment ends. That ha that's installed at the you would install that at the time that you install your LED street lights. It's all one process. Uh, Central Hudson doesn't require that those fuses be installed. Um, it's it's not a, a, a expensive part. And Ipa can probably give you um, the, Evan can probably give you a quote. I think around, around what around twenty twenty five dollars per fuse or something like that. Uh, I think it'd be a little more than that. Between okay. uh, thirty forty, I want to say off the top of my head. Okay. All right. Um, but anyway, it is, it, it's in at the time the light In Central Hudson Territory, you don't have to install the fuse, but you do have to have the trade off. And you have to have uh, uh, journeyman linemen, uh, certified journeyman linemen uh, working on the poles. So, uh, men and women, I should say. Uh, in the other utility, utility service territory, they don't make that requirement. They don't have that requirement. So uh, that is that is a difference. Um, all all have to be certified. All the work you have to be able to certify that you're meeting OSHA standards. Okay. Access code or meeting number. Call by Oh boy. Sorry about that, folks. Yeah, and you'll make your con. You'll make. You know, you'll make sure. Ten ID number followed by phone. Guys, that's a uh, part and parcel of my not being able to mute everyone. I apologize. I'm not sure where that caller is, but we'll just soldier on here. Yeah, yeah, Jen. Just saying, if if you go with a turnkey like NIPA, they will they will make sure that all the necessary. Uh, Qualifications are met by the installers and those doing you know, contracting for maintenance, of which there's going to be much because it lasts forever. LEDs what? Okay, uh, we're going to get on to some other questions. I'm sorry for your feedback. I'm not sure why. Um, Deb Gitterman is asking the companies that do billing audits, they tell. And bank. They're uh, on our website, website and white lights Okay, uh, and Amanda Bell Annabelle, we are recording this and everybody will 
the recording as well as the slides. I'm sorry you weren't able to hear it. Okay. No, I haven't done anything different. I'm not sure why the heavy feedback. But about this? We will send out answers to these questions. We've captured them. And we'll include them with the slides. I want Thank everyone to come to today's webinar. And if our email address is on the screen in front of you, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks.